Hello dear students, this is Sushma Singh and you are watching Booster Classes. Well, majority of you will agree with me when I say that there is a dire need to inculcate the qualities of determination and perseverance in our life. The new generation lack these two basic qualities and as a result, when faced by any kind of obstacle, they quit halfway through and give up. The sheer tenacity to work towards our ambition is missing in most of us. He, how about studying an extremely encouraging journey of a renowned scientist and get motivated? So let's take up a chapter named The Making of a Scientist by Robert W. Peterson. And yes, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. First and foremost, let me give you its overview. The chapter, The Making of a Scientist, is a biographical sketch of a renowned American biologist, Richard H. Ebright, who excelled in his research on butterflies. Throughout the chapter, the author gives details about the stages of Ebright's growth as a scientist. His keenness to achieve something great in the field of science and his untiring efforts are the key areas of focus in this chapter. His work on the hormones from the spots of a monarch pupa and his resultant findings about the chemical structure of the hormones came out as an answer to one of the major puzzles in biology. Well, now let me give you the in-depth explanation of this inspiring chapter in a very lucid manner. At the age of 22, Richard H. Ebright surprised the scientific world with the publication of his theory on how cells work. It was for the first time in a scientific journal entitled Proceedings of the National Academy of Science published the work of a college student. The author considered it to be a very special and a rare work. As a child, Abright lived in north of Reading, Pennsylvania. There was nothing for him to do. He did not have any company or friend in this place, so he took to collecting things like butterflies, rocks, fossils and coins. Sometimes he even did stargazing at night. Although Ebright had a driving curiosity and a bright mind, his mother played a great role in furthering his interest in learning and laid the foundation of his success. She took him on trips and bought him telescopes, microscopes, cameras and other equipment that helped the young scientist in a many ways. Her gift of a book titled the, Monarch, the Travels of Monarch X became a turning point in his life. This book told him how monarch butterflies migrate to Central America. Now this knowledge opened the world of science to Ebright and deepened his interest in insect life. His mother was his only companion until he started school. After that, she would bring home friends for him at, and at night be with him to do things together. She would spend almost every evening at the dining table with her son. When he did not have anything to do, she would find work for him that would help him learn things. This support, guidance, care and concern of Abright's mother helped the growth of a curious child into an accomplished scientist. An invitation was extended to the readers at the end of the book named The Travels of Monarch X to tag butterflies for research by Dr. Frederick Eckert. So, Abright started raising a flock of butterflies in the basement of his house because it was a challenge to collect enough butterflies in the short collecting season that lasted only six months. So, he would catch a female monarch, 
tag her eggs, develop them through the entire life cycle and finally tag them and let them fly away. However, he lost interest in tagging as it was a very tedious job. Besides, there was a very little feedback. All through his tagging exercise, only two butterflies had been recaptured. Now, when Abra was in seventh grade, he participated in a country science fair and lost it. His entry was slides of frog tissues sewn under a microscope. He felt really sad when he just sat there and others won many prizes. That was the time of motivation. A sense of real science entered him and he realized that winners had to try to do real experiments and not just a simple neat display. The competitive spirit started entering him and he thought of conducting experiments. Next year, his experiment on Viceroy's copy Monax came first in the geology division and overall third. Next year, again, he found out an unknown insect hormone which led him to his new theory on the life of cells. From Abraham's story, it is sufficiently clear that defeat is the stepping stone of success. Not winning every, anything at the science fair encouraged him greatly to conduct experiments. Let's know more about uh, his theory about cell life. Abraham researched on his theory of hormones, secreting gold spots of a monarch pupa for many years. When he succeeded in getting X-ray photos of the chemical structure of the hormone, it led discovery of the new theory of the cells. His, this new theory of cells attempts to answer how cells can read the blueprint of its DNA. Thus, it explains how cells get their shape and function. It is yet to be verified. Albert's new theory can help man understand the process, uh, process of life. It can also help in preventing cancer and other diseases. Therefore, it, if proved correct, uh, Abright's theory will be a, great, a big step in the field of science. He surprised everybody by graduating from the Harvard University with the highest honor. He later joined the Harvard Medical School and continued research and experiments to test his theory. The necessary ingredients or qualities that go into the making of a good scientist are to have a bright mind coupled with curiosity and will to work untiringly. A scientist must possess the will to learn from failures, the will to win by the dint of hard work. Abright's final growth as an exceptional scientist was due to the fact that he possessed all the ingredients necessary to make one an expert scientist. Now, apart from his uh, interest in scientific research, Abright uh, has other interests also. As a young student, he was an excellent debater and an orator. Not only this, he even took keen interest in outdoor activities and sports activities as well. He was a good photographer too and took pictures of natural objects and scientific exhibits. Richard Ebright was a straight A student and was a great fan of his social studies teacher who uh, opened many new ideas for him and uh, whom he, uh, his social science teacher liked him and had high regard for his capabilities. Let's now know about the noteworthy life lessons that are conveyed through this inspiring chapter. Firstly, it talks about that highlights that determination, perseverance and driving curiosity are the basic foundation for becoming successful. It also uh, emphasizes on the fact that failure is a stepping stone to success and even hobbies are a 
stepping stones to innovative ideas. Finally, this chapter also highlights the pivotal role of parents in enabling the children to become successful in life.